So welcome, uh, Andrea. And you're still muted. That's the most Hello. spoken se sentence, of, a sentence of 2020, I think. You're <laughs> muted, <laughs> I guess. Um, so Andrea, um, he will give a talk about uh, crunching data and geo server with discrete global grid systems. I had to read the abstract several times, and I'm very interested <laughs> in learning about this. Um, I will shortly introduce you. Um, so Andrea, uh, he works at the Geo Solutions Group. He is an open source enthusiast, and strong uh, experience in Java development, GIS. And his personal interests range from high performance software, huge data volume management, software testing, and quality. Um, and he's a full time open source developer on GeoServer and GeoTools. And um, you may have watched his presentation yesterday with Ian Turt and how he actually manages his time as an open source developer. Um, and he received the OSGEO Soul Cats Award in uh, 2017. And probably, if you pose a question on the Geo server users mailing list, you, you get an uh, answer from Andrea, even in the weekends. So, but we're very curious about your uh, talk, crunching data, discrete global grid system. So if you share your screen, I'll, yes. I'll, I'll give the floor to you, Andrea. Doing that right now. Here you go. Yep, I see it. So I go to the back and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. So yeah, uh, we are going to talk about uh, crunching data with the DGSs. So before I start, uh, just a shoot out to my company, GeoSolutions has offices in Italy and United States, customers worldwide. Uh, we are a technical uh, strong company with 25 engineers out of 30 people working at the company. Uh, we support uh, various open source projects such as GeoServer, GeoNode, MapStore, and GeoNetwork, and we offer support, development, training, and customized solutions. We are strong believers in open source uh, and in open standards, uh, and as such, we support both uh, OGC standards and standards uh, critical to GeoInt. Now, let's talk about the DGGSs. First off, we need to understand what I'm talking about because, uh, well, the first time I got an introduction to them, my head was spinning. I hope yours doesn't end like that, but I'll try my best. So a discrete global grid system is an, as a partitioning of the Earth in uh, areas which are called zones. And each zone has a unique identifier. It could be as easy as P1, S2, uh, uh, D123, or it could be something really hard to, to understand like an hexadecimal number like the ones used by H3. But the fact is each zone has a unique identifier. Zones, by the definition of the GGS that OGC has given, there is a, a paper about it. Uh, it's pretty interesting, read it if you have time, should have the same area. Uh, but not all implementation actually do have uh, this property. The partitioning has no arbitrary limits. So all map projections have some boundary. These GSs do not, they wrap the earth in a seamless way. So there is no problem with the poles, no problem with the dateline. Also, they are multi-resolutions. So zones have a parent-child relationship, they contain each other. The structure of the GGS can be pretty implemented, can be pretty hard to implement from a mathematical standpoint. So there are libraries that do implement uh, the, the mathematical underpinnings of the DGGS, and they typically provide three basic functionalities. One go from a zone identifier to their polygonal geometry. One go from a point or a polygon to the list of zones, to the zone or list of zones that cover that point or polygon. And given a zone parent, uh, uh, given, given a zone, get its parent, its children and, and its neighbors. So neighborhood um, properties, uh, neighborhood uh, operations, sorry. DGGS uh, has been implemented in GeoServer using two uh, the GGSs and the uh, equivalent libraries, RealPix and Uber's H3. RealPix uh, is uh, based on a square model. So um, the, the first partition uh, covers the earth in, 
I don't know, uh, nine tiles, 10 tiles or something like that. And then they split into nine over and over and over. Uh, each parent uh, contains exactly nine children. So you can sum the children and get the geometry of the parent. Each cell has four neighbors. So the neighborhood is the one of a rectangular grid. And uh, the zone identifiers are really easy to uh, reason with. So P is the parent of P1, P1 is the parent of P12, and so on. So you add numbers to, uh, to go from parent to children. One limitation, it only has a Python-based implementation, which means uh, we had troubles integrating it with GeoServer. H3 is an hexagon-based system uh, with a few pentagon mixed in that typically are over the seas um, to avoid uh, issues with their uh, deformation. Uh, each zone are six or seven children. Uh, this one is interesting because the, uh, the sum of the children do not make up the parent, but they um, overlap only partially and it's not equal area. However, it's equal distance, a property that doesn't have real peaks. So if I take uh, the distance between one cell and each neighbor, neighboring cell, they are all at the same distance. Instead, in, uh, in uh, real peaks, we got uh, four cells that uh, share the same distance and other four which are on a diagonal and are farther away. So it's better suited for problems where distance between the cell is more important than the area of the cell itself. Uh, the zone identifiers are pretty hard to reason with because they are 64-bit uh, integers uh, encoded in uh, hexadecimal. Uh, the implementation is not good, it's excellent. Uh, it has a, a very tiny C core and bindings for many languages. Some of them are actually nat native recoding like the JavaScript one. Now, the first thing that we did was to try and view the DGGS. As I was learning, uh, the, my, my first need was, OK, let's try to figure out these DGGSs, see how they look like. So based on the libraries, I've built a DGGS geometry data store. The data store just takes the type of DGGS that you want to, to implement and generates features which are the cells themselves, sorry, the zones themselves. So here is a GeoServer. WMS rendering real pics on a plat carré at a resolution level zero and at a re resolution level one. So you can see how the parent-child relationship work, how the splitting is happening. And uh, the, well, the, the cells also have this color coding, which is embedded into the H3 system. And well, it's nice to look at. H3 uh, is, as I said, pretty different is based on hexagons. And you can see that the hexagons have shapes which vary quite a bit. The darker cells are the pentagons, which are needed to close the, the structure. And we can see uh, the structure at resolution 0 and at resolution 1. Uh, once we have the store generating features, we can also use WFS to download the data and use, uh, uh, and use it to, for display in other systems. In this case, I use the WFS to generate a shape file. And then I displayed it in QGIS, uh, showing me um, resolution level one of RealPix, again in plot carré. OK, now that, we, now that I had a better understanding of how the geometric structure of DGGSs uh, was, I started working on representing data with DGGSs. So representing data with DGGS means that instead of encoding a geometry, you encode the, the place of your information the location by using zone identifiers. The thing is, uh, as you can see, we are splitting by uh, powers of nine or splitting by powers of seven. The number of uh, zones can uh, grow very, very large, especially at high resolutions. So it's uh, not difficult to end up with hundreds of trillions of uh, zones to cover the entire planet at the maximum resolution. To handle this kind of volume and to, to get a quick response, we uh, looked at an open source uh, OLAP database called ClickHouse. ClickHouse is interesting because it retains the familiar structure of our relational database, so tables, columns, but the tables are partitioned by default and the queries are spread out over the partitions by default. So they end up using automatically all the cores that you have and if you have a deployment that goes on, on a cluster, the queries also get uh, fun out on, on all the nodes. So it, uh, uh, it can run very complicated queries very fast. 
We did a sampling of uh, Sentinel-2 data on the Australian capital territory, which is an area in Australia uh, that contains Canberra. And we sampled Sentinel-2 at resolution 11, extracting uh, this table with uh, the zone ID of one zone, uh, uh, resolution, date, and the value of the bands, and other properties that we computed, such as the NDVI uh, and, and other indexes. We stored the results in uh, ClickHouse, and started serving data out of it. And this is a map with a get feature info uh, below, uh, powered by this system. The, resolution, the database is interesting because it's multi-resolution. So we ingested the um, resolution 11 data set, and then we started computing uh, the lower resolution levels by just doing simple math over parent-child relationships, which is pretty fast. And we ended up storing each resolution in ClickHouse. Now that we have a database, we started looking at an API. So we uh, implemented, we discussed uh, in the working group and implemented a DGGS API, which is reminiscent of OGC API features, but adds notions which are unique to the DGGSs. In particular, uh, I can list zones and uh, I have to say at which resolution I wanted to fetch the zones, and then uh, some spatial filtering based on bounding box or a geometry or uh, a list of parent zones that I wanted to get the children off, which is the most efficient access. Uh, that's one recurring theme in DGGS. Uh, if you try to mix a concept from the normal geography and go towards DGGSs, you're going to get slow queries. But if you start from DGGS identifiers are uh, the, the keys for spatial searches, then the searches are, are blazing fast. Uh, another uh, resource that we have is the neighbor of a particular zone. So we can uh, uh, identify a particular zone and uh, give a, a search radius and get all the nearby cells by a, a given distance. These are two examples. Uh, search radius of two cells in uh, H3 and RealPix. RealPix is a bit weird because its connectivity is just up and down, left and right, right? And instead, uh, the uh, H3 uh, system has hexagons and, uh, well, it looks more round. Um, we also have uh, uh, resources to gather parents and children of a given zone. And uh, so we uh, identify the parent, parent zone and we uh, say at which, res which resolution level we want to extract the children and we get the list of all the children with the data attached, of course, uh, if we want to. Also, uh, access by point and polygon. Uh, the point is, a is easy. We say this location, this resolution, we get a cell. The polygon can be interesting because we can say, OK, the, the target resolution is this one. And by default, we would get uh, a list of cells at that resolution. But we can get smarter and use compaction to get a shorter list uh, leveraging parent-child relationships. And uh, these two screenshots show a compacted uh, re representation of the uh, Australian capital territory in RealPix and in H3. Now that we have also an API, it would be also interesting to do some analysis because that's one of the things that uh, DGGSs are really good at, analysis, fast analysis. So this work was carried out uh, uh, during testbed 16. Uh, and there was another thread that was working on DAPA, the Data Access and Processing API. DAPA is another uh, evolution on top of OGC API features, but also OGC API coverages that allows to uh, extract the quick summaries, quick aggregates, like minimum, maximum, uh, medium, uh, standard deviation, by giving a, a box, a search box, like uh, by time, by area, both, and uh, deciding whether to aggregate completely or produce a time series and stuff like that. Uh, so we turned uh, the DAPA queries into ClickHouse queries. and. Uh, um, especially when the filter was expressed as a set of DGGS zones, the aggregation was incredibly fast. So to give you an example, uh, we aggregated uh, the max mean uh, and count of cells for all the bands of Sentinel-2 over the ACT, uh, crunching 9 million records in uh, like less than a second. 
on a spinning disk. Uh, it wasn't even an SSD. Uh, that's how good ClickHouse is if you set a reasonable query for it. Um, uh, DAPA fits very well with DGGS because we have a multi-resolution implementation, which means it's sort of a um, analysis-ready data structure in, in that you can, uh, you can start to uh, toying around and playing with your analysis at low resolution and get very fast responses back. Uh, say you are setting up a Jupyter notebook talking to the uh, DAPA API, for example. And uh, once you are satisfied with the general results, then you can amp up the, the resolution and get accurate results waiting a bit more time. OK, uh, if uh, this is interesting to you, uh, you can uh, look at the engineering reports for DGGS and DGGS API at uh, uh, OGC. Uh, there are a couple of them. Uh, uh, there's also the, the DAPA one, which also talks about the, the DAPA with uh, the DGGS flavor added on top of it. And if you want to try it out, the source code is under the OGC API community module umbrella. And uh, um, if you want to just download the binary, it's part of the OGC API community module. The OGC API community module basically contains all the OGC APIs that we have implemented so far. And that is it. I think I'm, I did it pretty quickly, <laughs> maybe too much. Yeah, it was quite uh, quick. We have uh, still around 13 uh, minutes. Um, but um, yeah. Plenty of time well, for questions. My, my, my head was crunching. So, um, but luckily there were, uh, there were some listeners that have some uh, interesting questions for you. Mm -hmm. So the first one is a longer question. I read it. Uh, do you have estimated the increase in storage space to go from a classic raster like TIFF to storing that as a DGCS? DGCS and ClickHouse. Click yes, we have it. It's in the report. <laughs> I don't remember the value. It's a few times larger. But I don't exactly I... remember how much. I'm sorry. Two, three mm -hmm. times, something like that. But I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. Um, I don't remember. But if you look into one of those OGC ERs, the answer is in there. Okay. And the next question is: uh, Since H3 does not nest perfectly, did you check how precise the aggregations of H3 cells in ClickHouse was? Again, the answer is available on the internet, uh, but I don't remember the exact value. Uh, anyways, generally speaking, uh, uh, H3 and RealPix target two very different classes of problems. So H3 was created by Uber to solve uh, a problem of uh, um, calculating fares for uh, their uh, taxi service. And so it is uh, particularly well optimized to work on land on distance-based problems uh, over uh, small areas because, well, they typically work over cities. Uh, small areas, good geographically speaking, that is. Uh, the fact that the, the system is not uh, equal area uh, implies that you shouldn't be using it for uh, any sort of statistical analysis where area is important because the the size of a cell can vary as much as 100%, as far as I remember. Also, uh, all the pentagons are located on the seas. So using H3 to do analysis of anything that happens on the seas is probably not a great idea, because mm -hmm. those are high deformation areas. Or at least that's where the high deformation areas are located. Instead, RealPix is very well suited to anything where area is important, but distance is not important because the neighboring cells are not equally distanced to the center one. Wow. OK. Um, that's fair enough. Um, the next question, the resolution levels are based on the zones. Is that correct? Oh. It's sort of the other way around. Uh, when you pick a, um, a resolution level, uh, 
uh, you get a, a certain partitioning, a, a, a generation of certain partition, partitioning of zones. So R equals zero generates these cells, and this is Europe. And this is Europe again at R1, with the parent cells drawn in orange and the children cell drawn in, in black. So you say resolution one, you get a certain set of cells. Uh, and uh, as you change the resolution level, you change the, the set of zones that you have. OK. And uh, still two questions to go, what mm -hmm. they're streaming in. Um, so could you please share a link to the OGC's paper you mentioned in the chat? Um, uh, yes. And I can paste it also here on screen because I don't know if the chat's still available after the conference, but the recording will be available. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so one is here. I'm giving you in the private chat and I'm also giving it in the public chat. Yeah, you can post it in the public chat. I paste it from there to to here. It's, uh, and uh, this is one. And then the other one is DAPA, which is here. Um, Yes, this one again here and there. So I show it here as well. Okay, and well, could be, uh, yeah, okay. But people uh, will find it. Okay. So, because people are just getting used to the new OGC APIs and you bringing that one, well, I should say a giant leap further, it looks like. Um, there's there's a, uh, another question. Was there a reason why you did not implement S2? Um, uh, yes, there was, and it's uh, time and resourcing. Uh, the test bed has a, a given time frame, uh, and we have a given hour allocated to working on it. So we needed to to look at uh, um, at at least two uh, DGGSs. RealPix uh, was a sort of mandatory because we had the creator of RealPix working in the group, uh, which meant we could peek at uh, all the details and the functionality and uh, and the math behind it from his head. So it was like a, a treasure trove to have. So it was uh, mm -hmm. too good of an opportunity to pass and we had to implement real things. And the other one is H3. H3 has become very, very popular. And uh, uh, we also had a request from outside to, to try out uh, H3. S2 uh, is kind of old. I don't think it, it has been uh, uh, pushed further any, any, any anymore by um, by Google. And uh, I'm also not sure that uh, it has either the equal distance nor the equal area property. So it's true that it's a, a complete partitioning of, of the Earth, but I think it lacks some of the basic properties that give DGGS, that make a DGGS what it is. Okay, that's clear. And uh, let's see. Yeah, well, we have you have answered all the questions, and uh, I think you're also the next speaker, right? I uh, am yeah, also the next speaker. Yes. Okay, but we still have five minutes, so it's it's not too bad to 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 uh, take a break here, and uh, you can sure. get a cup of uh, coffee, or I should say espresso, probably, or something yeah. uh, healthy. And uh, well, thanks very much, uh, Andrea. I will, will uh, certainly uh, dive into this, and I think many of the viewers as well. And um, well, we see you in the next uh, talk already. Thanks, and until later. Bye bye. Yep.